the next paper uh, titled Differences in Serum Markers of Oxidative Stress in Well-Controlled and Poorly Controlled Asthmatic Children in Sri Lanka, authored by Fernando Yen, Vikramasinghe VP, uh, Anuradha KWDA, De Silva U, Alaha Konem, Handuneti S, and presented by Fernando Yen. Over to you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of our presentation is differences in serum markers of oxidative stress in well-controlled and poorly controlled asthmatic children in Sri Lanka. Asthma is the most common chronic disease affecting 14% children globally. In Sri Lanka, 13 to 25% of all 5 to 11 year olds suffer from asthma. So what is the link between asthma and oxidative stress? When a foreign body, such as dust or pollen, enters our respiratory system, our immune system builds up its own response to combat this foreign body. This is the inflammatory response and results in the release of free radicals such as nitric oxides into the bloodstream. Free radicals are species with an unpaired electron that are capable of causing damage to host cells and organelles. So our hypothesis is that there is oxidative stress in asthma, meaning there's an imbalance between the prooxidants, which will promote cellular damage, and the antioxidants that quench free radicals and prevent damage to host cells and organelles. Our study population comprised children aged 5 to 15, presenting to the Lady Ridge Bay Hospital. There were 72 children, 20 poorly controlled asthmatics, 25 well controlled asthmatics, and 27 age and sex match healthy controls. Ethical approval was obtained from the Faculty of Medicine, Colombo. Patients eligible to be in each group were selected by the senior registrar in pediatrics. The study was then explained and consent was obtained to include the child in the study. Social demography data was collected and blood was collected by the trained nurses of LRH. The laboratory testing consisted of the GRIS assay and the ABTS assay. So the principle of the GRIS assay. The main nitrogen species in the lung is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is highly reactive and unstable, so it immediately converts into nitrite in serum. Therefore, nitrites and nitrates are the stable metabolites of nitric oxide with oxygen, and they can be used as indirect markers of nitric oxide presence. The GRIS assay was used to measure the serum nitrite levels. Nitrite in serum converts GRIS into a deep purple azo compound, and spectrophotometric measurements of absorbance are used to quantify the azo compound, which then corresponds to the serum nitrite level. For the modified GRIS assay, Vanadium chloride was added to the serum before adding GRIS, and therefore this reduced the nitrates in the serum to nitrites, so we could obtain a measurement for the total nitric oxide level. The ABTS decolorization method was used to determine the total antioxidant capacity, and it was based on the interaction between the ABTS radical cations and the antioxidants in the serum sample. Our results showed that there was no significant difference between any of the three groups, for any of the social demography characteristics considered, being age, gender, mother's education, father's education, and monthly family income. When looking at the results of the laboratory investigations, we compared the medians of the test parameters using the kruskal wallis test. And we saw that serum nitrates, NOx, and total antioxidant capacity were significantly different between the three groups, whereas there was no significance for serum nitrate. We further analyzed significant variables across the three groups using the Marmit new test, and we saw that the serum nitrate and NOx was not significant between the poorly controlled and well controlled asthmatics, meaning they had similar levels of inflammation. However, the serum total antioxidant capacity was significantly different between the poorly controlled and well controlled asthmatics. So we can say that the factor that's differentiating a poorly controlled asthmatic from a well controlled asthmatic is the total antioxidant capacity. This is a simple scatter plot to show the negative correlation between the oxidant and antioxidant capacity. And in conclusion, we see that nitrites, nitrates in the nitric oxide concentrations were highest in the poorly controlled asthmatics and lowest in the healthy controls, whereas it was the opposite for the total antioxidant capacity. We also see that serum total antioxidant capacity can be developed as a cheap and easy to perform assay to confirm good asthma control. We would like to thank the SLMA for giving us the opportunity to present this research, the National Science Foundation for funding, Professor Rajat Vikramasinghe for statistical assistance, Dr. Narmada Fernando for guidance at the IBM PV laboratory, and the principal of Columbia National School. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Dr. The uh, floor is open for discussion. Is this test freely available to use and is a cheap test or what's the cost of this test? Uh, Ma'am, uh, the, the no, antioxidant yes. assay or the... Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, I'm unsure of the exact cost, but um, it was comparatively cheap compared to other methods that have been used, such as like XA nitric oxide, which was another option, but that was very expensive compared to using uh, the ABTS and GRIS assay. How are you going to use these results in management of the child? Uh, well, ma'am, see, the, uh, based on the results of uh, the Marmit new test, we saw that the antioc total antioxidant capacity was significantly diff like there was a significant difference between the poorly controlled and well-controlled asthmatics. But there was no significant difference when we considered serum nitrate and NOx. So we can say that the factor that's differentiating a poorly controlled asthmatic from a well-controlled asthmatic is the total antioxidant capacity. But we still have to see whether the total antioxidant, like uh, having a higher total antioxidant capacity is the reason for being well, having well-controlled asthma or whether it's a result of well-controlled asthma. And when we find that, we can use it to control asthma. Uh, if I may answer to that, Madam, actually the next step is doing the next study of giving antioxidants and see whether this could be nullified and whether we could go beyond that. Yes, or improve the yeah. control. Yeah. It's coming from the... Inflammation, due to inflammation, or it causes inflammation? It's uh, both ways. Uh, it's actually coming from the inflammation, but the nullification takes place with antioxidants. And then the oxidative stress comes, you know, the inflammation gives rise to the oxidative stress, and that will be nullified by the antioxidant. So whether the antioxidant potent is not developed enough, or whether there is any dietary habits, or whether we supplement them, is the next step of the study. So what are the antioxidants we are going to use to? Uh, well, we have not looked at it. Probably the simple vitamins may be, just as much as we have been using vitamin E in dengue, which has shown good results. So we would try not only that, even vitamin C and other, mainly those two. I have a question. Um, I'm a respiratory physician, adult respiratory physician. Now, uh, something that we use is the phenol levels to assess the control. So that is the fraction of uh, cell nitrous oxide. Is there any particular, I was just thinking your study is an excellent study. Was there any, and you're absolutely right, it's a very expensive test and it is not readily available in Sri Lanka. But is there any place for comparing what you have found, the serum nitrate levels and the phenol levels? So was, did you all ever think of doing something like that so that we can actually see the serum levels and use that as a surrogate for the uh, phenol levels? Uh. Ma'am, I don't think we had an intention of doing that. Right, okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fernandez.